hi guys welcome back to my channel um, I know it's been a while since I've come on here and spoken about um, my Caribbean medical school experience but today I just wanted to sit here and basically have a chat with y'all and update you guys it's been a while and a lot has happened and so today I'll get into it um, like everybody else like most of people like most people I'm technically home um, in my comfort zone <laughs> um, and I'll tell you guys all about it um, basically it's gonna be a seven month story in what maximum 15 minutes in one video online if I can't make it in 15 I'll try cutting it in two but let me tell y'all the things that has happened okay let's start off with how it started off okay so um, Gosh, it was like mid-March. Um, I was an MD3, um, and news broke out that COVID was a real thing. Like, it was taking over the world, and people were actually dying. People were actually getting sick. Um, protocols were put, being put in place um, to protect people. Right? Borders started shutting down, and so we got news. Okay, let me go back a little. For those who are new on my channel. Um, I was studying in the Caribbean, St. Vincent specifically. I was in medical school there. And so when news broke out, I was actually in St. Vincent in school, for school, right? And um, yeah, so news broke out that flights were going to be um, canceled for an indefinite amount of time to both Canada and U.S. And people started panicking. Um, students wanted to go home before this happened students wanted to get out of here before they were stuck in the Caribbean I mean get out of the Caribbean before they got stuck there um, some students had already left they didn't care what the school had to, decided they just wanted to get out and leave and go see their families and kids and and I understand if you have kids you really want to go back home right I personally didn't have kids don't have kids and it was just my family like my parents my parents and my siblings and I felt better off staying in the Caribbean. It really didn't seem like a big deal there. Um, so I wanted to stay. Um, so it was around block three, mid-March, block three exams. Um, so since exams were about to start, I basically continued studying and was focused on my exams. And then as it got more serious, the school decided, uh, or because of the chaoticness of the matter and how the confusion and everything that was going on, the school decided to cancel exams until further notice. And basically, if anybody wanted to go home, they were free to go home and the school would inform us. So a lot of people decided to leave and go home. Uh, like when I say a lot of people, like I'm saying like 90% of the school was dipping. And regardless of that, I was like, Pfft. I got my girls, we ain't going nowhere, we staying here, we're going to get it done. And when, once we're done, we're going to go home, right? We're going to be able to stay focused here in the Caribbean. That's the only reason why we left home. Well, not the only reason, but that was a good, that was a good, that was the advantage of leaving home. We were able to stay focused in the Caribbean and just get med school done, right? And so regardless, I felt safe there, I wasn't going to go home. And so now that the exams were canceled, we had some time on our hands and since a lot of people were leaving and they were wanting to say goodbyes, we actually had my classmates, my classmates and a couple of friends from other classes or grades, um, we had a dinner um, because this would possibly be the last time that we would see each other for a very long time or maybe actually just this was the last time we were going to be seeing each other. And so we had a dinner and it was really nice, we were talking and um, it reached that part of the conversation where they asked, so, Edith, are you going home? I'm like, oh no, I'm gonna stay. And they were like, are you sure? Because, like, if they don't know when the flights are gonna come back and everything is so, like, up in the air and if anything happened, I would be stuck there. I wouldn't even have, like, an emergency flight home and, you know, it could be dangerous. I had nobody on the island to call. And then... At the end of the dinner, they were just like, okay, be careful, Edith, be careful, be careful. And at that moment, the amount of be carefuls I got, I was like, hold up. 
why do I feel like I'm making a stupid decision? So when I got home, I called my mom and I explained everything to her. And I'm like, mom, this is what's happening, blah, 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 blah. And mom is like, girl, come home. Be prior to that, she was just like, do whatever you want. And then after that conversation, she's like, girl, come home. Nobody knows what time these flights are going to open. Nobody knows what's going to happen. Just get back. And she literally booked me a flight out of the country like within 24 hours. So now I had to pack up my stuff and just rush out of the country. Before, like I was trying to catch the flight before last back to Canada. And even that they were telling me it might not even leave the country. And as I packed my stuff, I realized I had eight luggage because I had my brother who had also attended, but he had left way earlier for other reasons. And he was planning on coming back after everything was resolved. But now, because everything was such a rush, I tried packing everything, the whole apartment, in less than 24 hours. And <laughs> it was crazy. I realized I had eight baggage and I didn't even know how or what, like, to leave behind and how to pack it was just craziness anyways at the end of the day i ended up taking four and leaving four so two were mine and two were my brothers and i brought those back and i left everything else behind um hoping that i would be back in two honestly i thought i was going to be back in two weeks um i thought it was going to be like quick quick we'll resolve this and move on with our lives and go back into back to the Caribbean and enjoy life like this is just a little hiccup we'll figure it out but guys it's literally um what eight six seven months later and it's it's starting to go back up it went down and it's now going back up again here in Canada we have a 28 day quarantine or a 28 day um shut down or something like that for restaurants and you can't go to anybody's house and yada yada that has been put in place here in montreal quebec anyways so i packed my stuff i came back home and that was that we went online the school finally decided we we're going to do everything online and guys i tell you the headache of just getting to online medical online med school um so for those who are wondering how does online medical school work what we do is the teachers teach us off of zoom so essentially we're going to be zoom doctors and we um this the school has set it up where you know you have a like a zoom link where you can access each class and so school was from school was from 8 a.m or so to 5 p.m and so that's exactly what we did um at home you just log on at a.m and have your first class and second class and third class and fourth class and that was that just listen to a whole bunch of lectures and but the hardest part about all this was actually finding the space to study so my house was never a place for me to study i always went to the library i always went to um like I was be at school, cafe, but ever since everything was shut down, I had no space to sit. My home was my chill spot. I had my bed. There was nowhere. So finding a study space was very difficult. And finally, um, I got a desk. I found a desk in my house, which was somewhere in the basement. <sighs> set it up. And finally, I have a proper study space. But for a good... So that my the site for MD three. So I had two semesters. Uh, I had like a semester. Uh, sorry. So for MD three, I had like a month left. MD four, which was like four months. All of that was done without a proper study space. I would be in bed. I would be. Um, I would be on the floor in the living room. I would be in the dining room. I'd be in the kitchen. Sometimes I'd be outside. It was really hard having a study space and that made my studying really hard and it actually showed in my marks that I was struggling. So for those who are starting medical school online, um, make sure you have a proper study space, right? It's a whole different struggle when you don't have somewhere 
dedicated to study somewhere you can wake up and sit and not get tired and not be drained that somewhere that's not your bed yo i even tried i got a, a, a bed desk that didn't work because i would turn on my laptop and pass out <laughs> um i'm telling you zoom doctors yeah the struggle but make sure you have a study space that's very key to doing med school online a lot of people have been starting um, medical school online and i don't see it stop anytime soon um, if you're gonna do medical school online, make sure you have your space set, have a laptop, have your 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 desk, have however you want a laptop, a desk, two laptops, two screens, or you know however you need to be set up so you can have access to multiple screens. I use one screen for now because I don't have any other a second screen, but I make it happen, you know. Um, now let's talk about the school schedule. So what happened with my school is they pushed it back we start school now at 10 a.m and finish around 7 p.m right so they pushed it back two hours because of the people who are on a different time zone i'm on the eastern end so to me they just made my day longer and i had to start earlier uh, i mean start later but they just it didn't work well for me regardless because before it was 8 a.m to 5 p.m so then i could take a little break and then study and now it's like 10 a.m. to 7 p.m. So I would have to wake up in the morning, study a little. And if I'm not disciplined enough, that's hard. And then at 7 p.m. I have to stay up later. So it was just really messing up my, my, my pattern. And so once you figure out a pattern and how to deal with it, you're able to um, do better. So make sure that works for you. 10 a.m. to 7 p.m. Um, I don't know if they're planning on changing that again. Let's talk about lectures. Whoo! Lectures can be very long. Um, all day in your room, at your desk. It's kind of like class, but it's just that there aren't people around to talk to, laugh with, or when you take a class, like a 15 minute break, you have somebody you can talk to, somebody you can laugh with, you can go for a walk and see outside. I mean, I can do that here, but it's not the same, right? It's just your family and sometimes your family can really get annoying. Um, but lectures, um, yeah, you can easily fall into a pattern where you wake up, log in and fall asleep. But in all honesty, you're in med school, so you have to take it seriously, right? You have to, if you need the lectures, right, you need to make sure you're there. Saying that because, okay, so the lectures are recorded, and thinking that because it's recorded, I'll watch it at a later time. You're just wasting your time because you won't end up watching it, and then you're going to have a buildup of videos, and it's just best to do it live while class is going on, if you are the type that listens, if you're the type that needs it. Um same way as if you were on campus and you didn't need to listen to the teacher's lectures and you had your own schedule to learn the material you would use that dedicated time to do your thing and still be in class so it's the same thing you got to make sure that you're sitting up you're sit you're seated you're up ready to go ready to do whatever you have scheduled regardless if it's listening or not listening get something done don't waste time it, being online is not a reason to put things behind med school there's so much you will regret it at the end i'm telling you i learned the hard way um so make sure you're online and get your attendance in right they, t they do take attendance online um the only thing that sucks about being online is you actually don't see a teacher so it's more of like a recording but it's actually live but it would be nice if the teachers would also show their faces so we can see who the teacher is because a whole bunch of students enter a class and we don't know who we're t listening to. They don't even put an image of themselves up or there's nothing. You really don't know who it is. The only reason why I would know who my teachers were is because I was already on campus. So that's something to factor in if you really like to know who your teachers are. Um, I say, in all honesty, schedule a skype me so we use skype to talk to our teachers schedule a skype meeting and just have a one-on-one -on -one chit chat with your teacher about the course and everything um this is the time i feel like you should put more effort in getting to know who your prof is and your prof getting to know who you are they are also humans on the other end and they would really like to see who the students are so it's put in a little time to get to know who the prof is and the prof getting to know you is it helps i personally think it helps so it's a little 
some time out of your schedule but it doesn't kill you right um so let's talk about um so let's talk about exams exams are a headache we use a program called proctorio boy that they kicked you out they the proctorio was really hard to deal with but once you get the hang of it um you, you it is what it is you just use it do what you got to do don't make sure you're not cheating make sure it doesn't look like you're cheating um sit up and do your exam quietly and get it done for nbmes what we were doing were means what we did was we had zoom plus another program so the teachers would have us on zoom where they can see us doing the exam and there was some program that we had to set up that basically had access to our computer so they knew what was going on in our computer and they could see that we weren't cheating um that was so much more simpler than using proctorio um the only thing about proctorio is maybe i should make a whole video on this but there's ways of cheating the system yeah so guys my video is getting long winded it's about 20 minutes long i'm trying to cut as much as possible and make it as short as possible put your questions in the chat section below i totally recommend students doing online medical school it's a blessing in disguise if you're disciplined do it get it done do medical school online it's no harm you're at home and you're getting to the only thing that's missing is you miss the experience of traveling but a caribbean medical school online go ahead do it. I recommend it. There's in everything there's difficulties, there's hard times, there's struggles, there's stuff that needs to be perfected. But even when you're on campus, I'm telling you guys, there's other stuff that would be bothering you, other stuff that would need to be fixed that you would complain about. So just do it and there's no harm. It's it's worth it. In all in all honesty, it's worth it. So guys if you have any questions and you're about to start medical school online, especially Caribbean medical school online, put your questions in the chat below. Send me messages. I am very open to letting you know everything, sharing details about books, uh, what you need, resources. I'm totally willing, willing to share that with you. I hope to see you in the next video, guys. Bye.